Well, we're a week away from the early voting of uh, the Houston city elections, where we're going to select a new mayor, controller, and city council members. And we're following up one more time with city council candidate for at-large position number three, Michael Kubosh. Michael, welcome back to Texas GOP Vote. Thank you. It's good to be here today. You know, this election, early voting starts on Monday. And it's going to run through the end of the month, and then the election is right after that. Typically, what kind of voter turnout do we get in city elections? Uh, somewhere between 8 and about 12 percent. So that means uh, it averages about 10 percent of the people that are registered to vote. So every citizen that casts a vote is really casting 10 votes when you look at it. You, mm -hmm. When they diminish the vote, those who do vote have a much stronger voice. It's like a 10 to 1 multiplier. So how important it is to get out to vote because it's going to change the direction of your city. Please get out and vote this October the 21st through November the 1st, early vote, and then on November the 5th is the election day. Now, when you say change the course of the city, the city is, is running in, in kind of the wrong direction financially. We've talked with controller candidate Bill Frazier about that at, at length, and um, I think it's important that we get our council in a solid position to be able to stand up to the mayor and, and stop some of this frivolous spending and, and get our, our pension plan and our, our debt under control. Uh, not only those issues, but the, uh, the drainage fee tax, where the money is being spent in the wrong direction and we're not getting in the monies that were promised. How would, would you on city council go about working with the mayor on some of these issues? Well, one of the things that, that I've told people uh, in, this, in this election cycle is that I have absolutely no experience in city government. And by that I mean I have no experience of telling people one thing, Bob, and doing something else. I see that this that this money being spent uh, on Prop 1 years ago, we call it the rain tax, or uh, and but the money is being used to pay salaries instead of actually doing what it's supposed to do, and that's to repair roads and, and sewers and drainage fees. We have to hold this, this government accountable. And, and as a city council member, that's what we have to do. It's more than just saying no on a vote. Mm -hmm. it's, it's getting the word out to people what's really going on. We have to we have to sound the alarm, and until until a city council member is able to do that and to shine a light on what's really going on, the people won't know. If, if you just are voting no, it's just not enough. You have to be proactive. You got to do something. You got to get the word out. And every city council meeting, Bob, I've told the people over and over: when you come to city hall, you won't see me coming in late behind the horseshoe. I'm going to be standing at those double doors when you get off that elevator. You'll see me and my staff. I'm going to be shaking your hand, finding out why you're there, what are your needs, what are, what is the issues you have, why are you taking your time out of your day to come to city council, and I'm going to be concerned about it. I'm going to stand up for you. I'm going to do everything I can to help you because that's what I do. Now, why do you want this position? What What is it about this city that, that really drives you to want to be in this position? Bob, I've got, I've got 16 grandkids. I've got five children. And I'm concerned about the direction this city's going. I've got a lot of property in this city. I'm concerned about the health and the, and the welfare of this city. I, I don't want to see us go bankrupt. I don't want to see us go broke. I don't want to see the crime rates go up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like every day there's somebody's either getting shot at a Denny's or, or at a Subway sandwich place. And it just seems, it, it's scary, Bob, mm -hmm. that, that when we go out to a restaurant, we got to worry about being victimized as a criminal. Uh, and we've got to do something to protect our citizens. The number one function of government is to protect its citizens, not, not just from, from criminals, but also from those people who would promote these bonds, these schemes, where they want you to vote on a big bond and you don't ever know what the money actually went for. We, we've got to change this. We've got, to get, we've got to get some transparency in government, and it's going to take an outsider like me to get on the inside. So that's what I've been telling people. I'm an outsider. Put me on the inside, and I'll show you what's really going on down there at City Hall. Now, you've been talking to people all across the political spectrum on this campaign. Uh, you've met with Republican clubs across town. You've met with union groups across town. What's the reaction like when you're speaking to these people? Well, I, I'm, I'm well received because the people, the people are the same throughout the city when it comes to city politics. It's a nonpartisan race. They're concerned about their roads, sidewalks, sewers, police protection. doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican. You don't want to be held up and robbed at a Denny's. And, and people resonate with that. 
We've got to do something to beef up our police department. Right now, we, we have we have 150 less police officers than what we had 15 or 20 years ago. It, it's scary, but we've got to do something to solve these crimes. We've got to make, we've got to also do something about these young people that don't have a job. Because if my grandson isn't working, he's stealing. He's either stealing from me because he's not doing anything, or he's out there stealing from somebody in the public. And if we give people jobs and the people are making a good living, they're not nearly as likely to go out there and commit a crime. Well, early voting starts Monday. We want to get everybody out there to the vote. And uh, don't forget to bring your photo ID with you, as this is the first election in Texas history where we're actually requiring you to prove that you are who you say you are when you get ready to cast your vote. Michael, thank you for taking the time to explain the issues over these past few weeks to the voters at Texas GOP Vote. And uh, good luck in your election this, this next couple of weeks. Bob, I'm looking forward to serving the people. Thank you. God bless you. Good. You happy with all that? Yes, sir. Anything you want to add or? No, it's fine.